The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 23rd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be Pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that <clears throat> is to always remember that life is happening for us, <clears throat> not to us, except for this little uh, coughing incident that I'm uh, dealing with right here. But I guess that's happening for us as well. So here's the deal, folks. I would absolutely love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now, send that early. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, <clears throat> if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. And inside our Tiger's Den, we'll take any and every ping. So please, give us call 877-927-6648. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger <clears throat> Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a mixed bag out there. You've got the Dow off 155, about a half a percent, one-tenth for the S&P, and we're basically flat. We're off six points in the NASDAQ 100. We're not flat in the Russell. That's up 10 points, a half a percent. One and one-tenth percent for the S and, or for the semis. That's up 32 points. Tranny's up a half a percent, or 67. So truly a mixed bag out there. Gold's up 17 bucks, 1765 is a print there. Silver's up 22 cents. That's up one and a quarter percent, 1910 is the print. Lights recruit up 340, 93.78. Natural gas is up nine cents. That's trading out at 9.73. The 30-year treasury up 13 ticks. 138.10 is the print there. <clears throat> Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside you've got uh, Palo Alto Networks up 51 bucks or 10 percent. Tesla's up 12 bucks. Pioneer Natural Resources up nine dollars. That's four percent. John Deere up uh, about uh, two and three tenths percent, nearly nine bucks. And Lamb Research up uh, eight bucks. To the downside, at Zoom Video down 13. That's 14%. Golden Sun Education down 13 and change. That's 38%. Giga Cloud Technologies off 12 bucks or 28%. So we've got some shakers out there. And of course, we've got some movers. So let's begin. <clears throat> let's begin this way. But it just changed screens here. I'm treading lightly, uh, trying to not uh, do as much uh, breathing in and out just to get rid of that nasty little dust particle or whatever it was that got inside my throat. <clears throat> In any event, here are the NQ charts. Now, the largest time frame that we have up here is the daily time frame. You can see that that price is below the bottom of its daily profile. And one price target to the downside <clears throat> would be 12, 191.75. That is its TD9 count breakout area. So that's definitely in play. However, <clears throat> each of the intraday charts that we now look at have bottoming patterns. The NQ, the five-hour chart, has a TD9 count bottom. It also may trigger, well, it's triggered a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. Depending on how this five-hour bar closes, you have a key reversal bar going right now. If price closes one tick to the upside, now that's not going to be till 2 p.m. It's a five-hour chart. But if it does close the upside, then what you have is a confirmed Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom pattern for the five-hour NQ as well with price targeting its oscillator and change on at 13.055. A price, a close above that would definitely say we've got more rally. Now more rally would be 13.149 would be the next resistance level on the five hour time frame. In the case of the 240, it has a TD9 count bottom. It has a buy the D point bottom as well. And we can see that this morning's rally uh, found resistance at that oscillator and change on the 12.994 area. The two hour chart has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price is trading with inside a bullish structured profile. Price likely should target the 13.064 level, the top of that current profile. 60 minute time frame, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. 30 minute, the same pattern out there. 15 minute, the same pattern out there. But 10 minute, I add in the 15 minute, <clears throat> I completed a sell the D point patterns, and that has led to price pulling back to test support. 
Support is 12881. That is the bottom of the profile for the 15 and a 10 minute time frame. There's also breakout support below that at 12844. But if we're going to summarize the NQ here, which I'm going to summarize for you, the NQ is attempting to form a bottom on all of its time frame charts, the exception being the daily time frame out there. So just something to think about. Let's go take a look at the ES mini. We're going to see the same set of patterns out here. <clears throat> I'll pull this chart up here momentarily. And on the daily, what you'll see is prices below the bottom of that daily profile. That does open up the door for a price move down to 39.38.75, the TD9 count breakout area. As these other charts populate, and they'll populate here momentarily, what you're going to see is bottoming patterns for all of its intraday time periods as well. Although the five-hour chart is not yet completed, it has a TD9 count. It has a buy the D point bottom out there. It's got a couple hammer candles that have formed. It also has triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. <clears throat> like the NQ, if price closes one tick above the open, by the way, the open of the current bar, now this is not till 2 p.m., but the open of the current five-hour bar is at 4138.50. If price were to close at 4138.75, that's one tick to the upside, that would be a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Both those patterns, well, the TD9 count, the buy, the D point, and then you add a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal, certainly suggest targeting that red oscillator and change line, 4181 or so. If price closes above that, <clears throat> then you've got a rally potentially up to 4285 or beyond. <clears throat> Four hour time frame chart TD9 count bottom, buy, the D point bottom, uh, which is a Gartley buy pattern, and it also has triggered a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. That suggests that if that was so you already got bottoms out here, but you just had a third one. Does that make it more impressive? No, it doesn't impress you. It impresses me, perhaps out there. But again, still price has to take out resistance levels. Now, the cool thing about each of the, the charts here, the NQ and the ES that we're looking at is if the lows get taken out, right, because we have all these bottom signals for these intraday time periods out there. If those lows get taken out, they definitely are signaling to you and I that price wants to make its way back to the 39, 38, 75. We'd have one caveat to that, and we'll come to the caveat. But if you look at the 30-minute time frame chart, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, the same on the 60, the same on the 15. And um, with regard to its 10-minute time frame chart out here, price struggle that is TD9 count top out here. That formed at about, uh, what, uh, 4.30, I believe. I was about 4 and 4.30 in the morning out there. And that high, that ES mini needs to close above 41.57. Um, if price can close above that, it signals a, uh, you know, a likely move to the upside out there. So right now, <clears throat> you've got all these bottom signals. We've had, we take a look at the 10-minute time frame chart, price pull back, test levels of support, 15-minute chart the same way out here. And uh, so this is suggesting that the market really wants to rally. If we pulled up the Dow equity future contract charts, we would see the exact same patterns out here, intraday bottoming signals. So tells us that the intent of the market is to rally beyond what it's already done today. But if those lows get taken out, well, then the message gets uh, changed. And that message would say we're headed to the downside with 39.38.75 being the likely price target. So we're about to go to breakout here. Still a mixed bag. The Dow's off 123. The S&P is off two points. Seems like the throat here has recovered. And that is a beautiful thing. <clears throat> Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, before we get to a couple of questions that have come in, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart here for the NDX 100. This adds to the idea that there's a very good possibility that the move lower yesterday was nothing more than your normal two to three bar knee jerk reaction to the downside. So coming off of the June lows out here, we can see uh, the first uh, pullback was a, a two bar reaction. The second pullback was a three bar reaction. Now, what we're looking at here are consecutive daily closes to the downside. The black numbers are consecutive daily closes to the upside out there. And uh, uh, so yesterday was bar number two of that consecutive close. The question is, the last time uh, coming off of the top, we had a two bar move to the downside, then one bar to the upside, and then we had two to the downside. So the question is, is this a, uh, is this a knee jerk reaction low and price is going to go target that 13,365 level? Or is this just a one day reprieve? But I don't know the answer to that just yet. We'd really have to be paying attention to those resistance areas out there. But there is the possibility. Uh, that uh, yesterday's move, even though it broke through some key levels of support, and that's why it's a, a little bit more difficult to, to call and make that determination, but this still, still could be just nothing more than your normal two-bar reaction to the uh, downside. So let's get to a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, first one coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at ExxonMobil. So we'll switch over to our three-panel set of charts. Out. Well, geez, Stevie, you didn't need to do that. What you needed to do was this. So we're going to go ch change over to this set of charts, and we're actually going to uh, go take a look at the, uh, because of the question here. So the question is, hey, Steve-O, happy Taco Tuesday. Back at you, my friend. ExxonMobil, if it can get the volume today, is it a massive A to B equals CD to the upside? Thanks, Hector and uh, Patty. Get you on the archive. Have a great day. No problem. So uh, as you take a look at what, what Hector's looking at here is the B point of an A to B equals CD. Also happens to be wave number B in the Chapman wave out here. Was from the trading day of July 29th. The volume there, should be able to pull this up. The volume on that candle is 29 million shares. Today so far, volume wise, we are at uh, 10 million shares. That's not bad. So you can see that just in two hours time, if we were to take the straight line math, we'd be trading from 9.30 to 11.30, 10 million shares, multiply that times basically three and a half, we'd be at 30 plus million shares. That B point of the A to B equals CD 
has 29.8 million shares. Now, I don't know if the volume will keep up or not, but the answer to Hector's question is yes. If price closes above that B point, the high of that B point for ExxonMobil is 97.52, that will create an A to B equals C to the upside. That should take us to the TD9 count top from way back in uh, June of this year. Price is trading above the top of the profile and green outsider and change line. Hector, for the weekly time frame, that is a bullish signal, and that suggests a move back to its uh, highs from uh, June. The uh, highs from June formed a TD9 count top on the monthly time frame, but still price above profiles is green oscillator and change line, so that signal is neutralized. So now let's go take a look at the A to B equals CD. We'll go back to my black background charts out there because I've got the tool that makes it easy to draw that pattern in. And what Hector and Patty and you will also see is the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD would give us a price projection of 103.11. The retracement here, about a 0.682, was 67% out there. So, uh, and the price is on the right-hand side of that C to D leg. So, more likely than not, uh, that's where it will uh, perhaps end its pattern, the 103.11. But the way we'll know that is by taking a look at volume as uh, price approaches that swing point from June 8th. If it's approaching it with more than 31 million shares, well, then price is going to at least go tag the high at 105.57 or perhaps make more than a one-to-one -one A to B equal CD and get up in that 107.68 area. So yes, Hector and Patty. Uh, the other thing that uh, would be taking place today, even if price does not take out 97.52 with volume, that B point was the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. So if you close above that period, uh, you will have negated that signal and that would suggest higher price out there. So I hope that answers your question. Hector and Patty, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. And you have a, a terrific Taco Tuesday as well. Let's go to our next question. This one's coming in from the Tigers. In fact, it's the only question that we have in place right now, and that is from Coda. And Coda wants to take a look at a carbon capture uh, carbon capture stock called, uh, what screen am I on? I'm in the black ones. KRBN, KRBN. So <clears throat> quite an interesting stock here. Um, Coda, any idea what's causing all of these gaps with inside here? Is it just natural? I mean, it's not, it doesn't look to me to be anything currency related out there, but uh, it does have an uh, uh, extraordinarily large number of uh, gaps. So I don't know that we can really use those gaps, uh, you know, in our work out here to help us identify. What we can do is let's move over from here. So we can see that price uh, today is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 49.13. But it does have support, potential support, and that is at the uh, top of its weekly profile. And that's at 48.57. So that's an area to uh, look at. The monthly time frame chart not it hasn't traded long enough to uh, give us any kind of profile information. So let's switch over to those white background charts, see if there's some patterns there. Now, I don't recall the question. It might have been just look at it. So I don't know if uh, there is something specific that you wanted me to, uh, to, to look at here. But on the uh, daily time frame, all you have is, well, I've got a potential wave number seven. That's letter G out there. The next downside price target out here, hmm. Where would that be? So I have to stick with the uh, weekly profiles out there. I, I could say 43.27. That's the TD9 count breakout area out there. So that certainly is a possibility. But I think we, what we have to do here, Coda, is watch the weekly profile level. So we gave you the, the top of the profile, which price is basically sitting just below right now. The other weekly profile areas are at 45.15, 45.14 to 46.51 out there so that may be the uh, price target the 195 minute chart says well hold on a minute here guys 47.64 is what it wants to target so there if price closed below 47.64 that would be the breakout time the breakout level on the 195 and the second breakout level on the 130 minute chart so i would say that uh, coda if uh, price uh, closes below that that suggests lower price as well don't have any pattern on the 65 minute uh, time frame chart worth noting the 30-minute uh, is attempting to form a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom signal. Now, you've got five, four minutes left in the trading session. So the 30-minute is saying you're going to confirm because you've got a piercing candle. I'll assume that that's going to retain itself. It should. Uh, and that price should then target 48.65. And above that, so here's the problem. You've got a new profile that formed on a 30-minute basis, uh, Coda, and that is above price. And that's a bearish message. Now, I say it's a bearish message because that's really how you interpret these profiles. But if price were to close about 49.27, then it's not so bearish after all. And the next level that price would target would be 49.53. So it does look like KRBN 
which is the Crane Shares Global Carbon Strategy ETF. It would be better probably to take a look at the individual stocks that make that up. Uh, you're looking to get long. So you're looking to get long. <clears throat> I guess then watch the 30-minute time frame chart. I know you'd rather pay lower than higher, but price needs to close about 49.53 to suggest that maybe there is a bottom. We don't have that pattern on the daily, but you've got that weekly at support. And that's about the best that I can do for you, Coda. So I do hope that helps. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. Uh, checking the emails. I don't see any other requests out here. And I don't believe there is uh, anything in the Tigers. No, I take that back. Stevie. Thoughts on DBA. So we'll pull up the charts here for DBA. Now, DBA, what I'll do during the break, is made up of a real basket of uh, commodities out there. And so let's see what those top commodities are when we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So, their question is to take a look at uh, ticker symbol DBA. That is a, uh, in, uh, you know, since it's an agricultural fund ETF out here. But if we take a look at as of last evening, we take a look at the mix out here. So soybeans are the number one holding as of last night inside of this uh, inside of this equity, 14 percent. Below that is corn. That's 13.3 uh, percent. Below that is cattle, nearly 12 percent. Then you've got coffee, sugar, cocoa, lean hogs, wheat. Um, it has both Kansas City uh, wheat out here. You've got the uh, feeder cattle. You've got uh, cotton. So that's what makes this up here. The top three, 14, 27, 38, so the top four are nearly 50%. That's corn, 
soybeans, live cattle, and coffee. Okay, so we know that out here. So now let's just take a look at DBA itself. But that's really important for anybody who's trading this to understand because you're really trying to figure out where this is going. You've got to take a look at each of those um, commodity futures contracts that represent that holding to see where things are headed to. So it does make it complicated. If we just took a DBA and forget all that stuff out there, which I can't really forget, but but I'm going to forget, what we can see out here is this formed a Rhodesman to mitigator top on the weekly time frame. What that did was that took price right back to, right back to its breakout level of 1954. Price is back inside its weekly profile, and I would say a price can overcome the monthly oscillator and change line. That's resistance. That's at 2055. We're trading at 2053. If we can get above 2055, then we're looking at 28, 2082, and then 2108. If price goes above 2108, then that suggests we move higher out here. Now, in the daily time frame, what we have, you know, theoretically, because of they've got a bunch of gaps out here, is a confirmed Rhodesman indicator bottom out here, with price just consolidating with inside its profile. That's between 2029 and 2067. So close about 2067, should then get us up to 2082 and then potentially 2108. 2057, excuse me, happens to be, that's interesting. That's really interesting. I thought I'd end up with two of those daily charts on that thing. But I did, so we're just going to get rid of one of them. Yeah, I think I got really the right one. So on the 195-minute uh, chart, 2057, maybe I talked about that. You got that same thing on the 130 I'm going to chart that's your TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So those are levels that you'd like to see price close above. Now, what's going on in, on some of those top instruments? Well, for example, let's change our screens, change windows here. Let's go back to a live cattle. Live cattle, we're going to take a look at the October contract. That's the current contract. What we'll see here, I'll just simply expand this out, is what live cattle has done. It made its way all the way back up to a high where it formed a sell the D point pattern. Confirm that sell the D point pattern on August the 18th. What do you mean, Steve Arino? What I mean is that the sell the D point required an A to B equals CD. The A point out here being the low from May 31st. The B point being the high from June 21st. The C point being the low from July 11th. This made just slightly more than a one-to-one -one move out there. You've got your bearish reversal candle, your Three River Evening Star out there. And all that that has done is taken price back to support, which is all, well, potentially support. And that is, we saw more than two closes above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. Counter trend moves will typically find support then at the center of that profile, and that would be at 143.82. So with regard to one of the top uh, five or top four instruments that make up the DBA, uh, you'd want to watch 143.82 for live cattle. If that holds, that would be a positive thing, and price should resume itself to the upside. Now, we saw that there were other commodities that were part of that. Uh, where is this, Stevie? That's not it. There we go. So now we take a look at some of those other categories. You've got wheat out here. So at wheat, although I don't have a bottoming pattern, I don't have a confirmed bottoming pattern out here. Price is back inside its profile. And you can see that price is also dealing with resistance. What you need to see in order for DBA to get some legs with regard to one of the top components in there is a close above 826.50. Soybeans were the number one holding. In the case of soybeans, what we can see here is price has basically been consolidating between its rising trend line and descending trend lines. But right now, today, it's above the descending trend line, running right smack dab into resistance. That's the top of its daily profile. So in order for DBA to get movement to the upside, you need to see soybeans close above 1468.70. If you get that, then you're bullish and price should go target the 1575 level. Corn was also, I believe corn was also a part of it. Now, corn has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. It's uh, next price target, not not much higher than where it traded to today, 672.68. Uh, but above that, 697.07. So corn is already in a uh, confirmed move to the upside. So that should help out DBA. So too should coffee. That was a part of it. Coffee taking out the top of its daily profile. That would set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. But we could see a descending trend line in about the 230-ish area out there. Sugar was a part of that uh, DBA. And uh, price just consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. And cocoa right now does have an A to B equals CD pattern, but it's threatening to take out that B point with a close below 2314. 
So that's uh, kind of your overview with regard to the DBA and what's going on there. I do hope that helps you out, and thanks so much for the request. Next request coming in from Jimmy inside the Tiger's Den, and Jimmy wants to take a look at ticker symbol CAL. So we're going to switch panels out here and go take a look at that three-panel white background chart. So, Jimmy, what you want to know is that today becomes bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. Now, bar number nine still has to complete. What that means is that tomorrow price must close above 3042. If price closes above 3042 tomorrow, assuming that it doesn't sell off today, by the way, today price has to close above 2985. So if it does that, then tomorrow what price would need to do is close above 3042. If we get that, then what you have is you have a you would have a confirmed TD9 count. Now the higher high can't take place in the following trading session, meaning on Thursday out there. But so this says to be cautious with regard to the TD9 count pattern, but you need to see if this fulfills itself and plays out. It is bullish. Price is above the top of its daily profile, 3012 out there, but there is a new topping pattern that is in play out here. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart is attempting to take out its TD9 count top. Now, in order to do that, price would need to close above 2994. So you got one possible scenario is that well i don't know what that possible scenario is just just yet actually um i guess the best possible scenario is that today close below that bar number four and that, that td9 count goes away and then tomorrow or by friday you close above the weekly td9 count to say that you're moving higher so everything here looks really good you got a td9 count top on the uh, monthly time frame as well so this is really doing everything that it can to try to break out here jimmy but the concern is that over the course of the next couple of days, you really could get that daily TD9 count top. Now, that may just simply be a pullback to the top of its daily profile, 3012. Maybe it's signaling to pull back to the retracement to the oscillator and change line at 2966. So might be better, uh, Jimmy. You know, we'll, uh, we plan on being here tomorrow. Is uh, Maybe we take a look at this uh, for you tomorrow as well. And certainly we'd want to look at it on Thursday just to see how these patterns here. So it does look bullish, but our concern is the uh, daily time frame out there. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. The next request coming in from Dan. And Dan, want to take a look at GSM. So let's get uh, this populated on our screens out here. Let me try to get back to my other screens just to see what uh, GSM is. Where is it? Right here. GSM. Feels like I should know this, and uh, but I don't. Uh, Ferro Globe PLC out here trading out at seven dollars and fifteen cents as we speak. So what do we know about GSM? Well, much like we were just talking about with Jimmy about CAL, uh, this formed a TD9 count top, and what it did basically today and yesterday was it took price back to its oscillator and change line. If that level holds 686, then what you've got is the next setup of the bullish move. That should take you at least to 753, likely take out that TD9 count top and up to 785. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll finish looking at GSM for Dan. We get back to this one. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Dow's down 117. S&P's off one. NASDAQ uh, 100 up 19. The Russell's up 11. Semi's up 38 points. It's one and three tenths of the upside. We're taking a look at ticker symbol GSM for Dan inside the uh, Tiger's Den out here. Uh, GSM is uh, Ferroglobe PLC. And uh, so if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we covered the daily out there. The TD9 count top took price back to support as long as the 686 level holds. Uh, price should make its way to 753 and then likely up to 785. The reason why we say that is because the weekly time frame chart continues to be bullish. What I mean by that is price is above the top of its weekly profile. This is the third week out there. That suggests that over time that price would want to go target the 994 level out there. No, on a monthly time frame, what we have is good old-fashioned consolidation. And that's between 507 and 832. So the next moves to the upside, Dan. 753. Then you've got the TD9 count top that you've got to deal with, bar number 8. That's at the uh, 769 level. And if you get above that, then you've got 785. So we're just giving you where the battlegrounds are. And then above 785, then the last battleground that I see out here right now would be 832. And if you can close above 832, then that would be a signal that price would go move up to the 844 level. And then above 844, then you'd be getting to your 994 level out there. So I gave you a number of areas, but you already know ahead of time where those battles are. And that is the uh, cool thing. So we like the chart. Set up as we speak right now, and that's our take on GSM. Hope that that helps you out. The next question coming from LB, and LB wants to take a look at one of his favorite stocks, and that is uranium. Okay, get the current rundown in uranium long-term hold for LB. So let's move over to its multi-time frame set of charts out here, and let's take a look at this. So from a long-term standpoint, of course, what uh, LB would be interested in what's going on on the monthly time frame. And on a monthly time frame, what we have right now is basically a consolidation with inside its profile. And that's between the level of where it's trading right now. The bottom of that profile is 2010. The top is 3016. Let's look at the weekly time frame chart. Weekly time frame chart right now shows what? It's a great question. What does it show? So as we pull this back. So, you know, what this is just telling us is that you're is that the, hold on a second, in the profile, 2027. So although I can't see it, the top of the uh, daily, I, it's, it's just behind this red bar. So price is running into resistance on a weekly basis at both the top of its weekly profile, 2027, and its oscillator and change line. So what you're looking for, LB, here is a close above that level, 2027. So that's a key area for you to watch up. What happens if it doesn't close above that level? Well, price could pull back easily to 1831, to 1896, that's a bullish structured weekly profile. On the daily time frame, price is now below the bottom of its daily profile. Closed below it a couple days ago. Um, 
As long as it remains below 2039, that suggests that it may get back to its June lows out there. 195 minute time frame chart uh, does have an A to B equals CD pattern, but price ran into resistance at 2035. So, your long term trader, if price can close above 2035, uh, that would get us start getting us close to getting back inside the daily profile of 2039. The daily really, what you really need to see here is a close above that green oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 2056. If you can get that, then that's a sign that, okay, you might be headed to the upside. You've got a battle of 2116, a battle of 2167, and then your third battle would be 2208. The third time would be the charm. If price can close above that, then you're moving to the upside out there. So that's pretty much all that I see with regard to uranium, uh, Lee. Uh, so I do hope that that helps you out, and thanks much for taking the time to write in. Uh, Steve, are your profiles your proprietary format or TAS? They are the TAS market profiles, Jimmy, uh, that I'm using out here. Um, is uh, TAS market profile still an offering at TFN? Uh, you know, I'm not sure, but certainly you can go direct. You can go to the TAS website to uh, take a look at their profiles. Uh, you know, those of you that watch this show know that I use these significantly. You get the opportunity to see how well they do at identifying where buyers and sellers are and giving you advance warning as to where the uh, next battles are out there. The next battles either between buyers or sellers. So uh, I, uh, I can't imagine uh, trading or interpreting the market without understanding uh, that information. It sort of gives us, you and I, a competitive advantage out there. And I know that we like competitive advantages. All right, so uh, no other questions that have come in. Um, and uh, let's go over to something that's interesting out here. Nobody's asked about it, uh, at least yet on this show, and that would be the GDX. So let me show you a pattern that I'm looking at. Now, we won't have confirmation until Friday on this, but it's coming potentially coming from the weekly time frame chart. Now, I'll expand this out. What I actually need to do is add some more data to it. So uh, I'll do that, and then hopefully I remember to reset this back down lower here. So let's get 5,000 days worth. Now, it's a weekly chart that I'm looking at, but I'm loading it with 5,000 days worth of data. Now, what I want you to notice here is that what has been triggered on a weekly basis. So first, we have an A to B equals CD to the downside, but that has not completed. But what we now have is we now have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. That's this week. If we get a bullish reversal candle, that will confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And then at that stage, I won't worry about the fact that the A to B equals CD pattern has not completed. Of course, price would need to close above its oscillator and change line and then the top of its profile at 27.99. But, uh, you know, if we all it needs to do is close at least halfway into last week's bar. That would then give us a bullish piercing candle. We could get a bullish engulfing candle as well if it closes above last week's open. But the GDX on a weekly basis has given us that signal. Why is that important? Well, I've been trying to call a bottom on the GDX for a while now. And as we pull the stock chart back, let's try to do it this way here. Pull it back. Here is the, the next earliest set of weekly Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom signals. And that was taking out a TD9 count bottom X on a weekly basis on July 24th. That was back in 2015 out there. You got your final Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom in January of 2016 when you had a nice bullish hammer candle form. That created also a Three River Morning Star. We can see that price took off to the upside out there. I don't recall if there's any other weekly. Yeah, here's another weekly Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom back in December of 2013. That led to a nice uh, little rally out there. Here's another TD9 count bottom back in June 28th of 2013. That led to a nice rally out there. So what we're watching for here in the GDX, or what I'm watching for here in the uh, GDX, that's as far back right now as that data goes, would be to watch how the weekly bar unfolds. So it's Tuesday. It's too early to make that determination. But if we do get a bullish reversal candle out here, then odds favor that we have a, a nice bottom inside of the uh, GDX out there. So um, that's what Stevie is watching. Uh, MKC says, let's see, okay, thanks. we can get the profiles like yours on any ticker with the TAS profile. So that's back to Jimmy's question. Uh, yeah, they have, the TAS has three or four different product offerings. You want to get the ones that have, now, you can get them, but it only works on certain software. So I don't know what software, Jimmy, it is that you're using. 
Uh, so it certainly works on uh, Ninja Trader, which are the white background charts, and it certainly works on the eSignal platform out there. I don't, off the top of my head, know what plat other platforms. I know that it does work on other platforms. It certainly works on Tom's Bloomberg platform out there. But if you just go to their website, it'll show you um, the, uh, the software packages, and then it will apply to uh, your uh, charts out there, just like they are applying to my charts, whatever time frame it is that we decide to use out here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the last uh, request in the hopper out here is to take a look at uh, Apple. And as we take a look at Apple, what do we know on the uh, daily time frame? What we have out here, we certainly have a sell the D point pattern. That uh, formed yesterday with that gap to the downside. Price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that profile is at 170.60. This says that Apple may be targeting its 152.16 level. That's its TD9 count breakout area. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, we can see that Apple ran into resistance at a descending trend line out there, as well as at the top of its TD9 count breakout breakdown area at 171.52. Um, so on a weekly basis, we don't really have a top. What we do have is price hitting resistance. That itself can be a top out here. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, price running to resistance at the top of its profile, its oscillator and change line, and that's in the 171-ish area out there. Now, the 30-minute time frame chart here. So we talked about when we started the show, 
We took a look at the NQ. We took a look at the ES Mini. We took a look at uh, the Spot Volatility Index, I believe. And uh, we, we, we looked at how each of the intraday time frame charts for the NQ, for the ES, for the YM, each have bottoming patterns out there. They are suggesting that the market wants to rally. We also looked at the fact that there was uh, likely a, a two-day knee-jerk reaction pullback out there. Um, and uh, we didn't take a look at the advanced client oscillator, which has gotten down into its oversold territory. Now, of course, Apple will be a key stock out here if the market is going to rally. What Apple did during that last uh, half-hour session was it got to wave number seven, that's letter G. It also, right now, in the next four minutes, may confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom for the 30-minute time frame. That says for Apple, if there's going to be a rally inside the NQ, you need to see a close above 168.22. If you get that, Apple can get back to yesterday's gap or it can even get back to 172.27 out there. So that's what it looks like when we take a look at Apple. So I'd watch that on its 30-minute time frame and watch for the 168.22 level. Prices trading above that or close above that, that suggests that the rally that the intraday charts for the NQ and the ES and the YM are signaling to us should continue to unfold. Folks, stay tuned. We've got great programming lined up and please join me tomorrow at 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday. I look forward to seeing you on wonderful Wednesday. Take care. Be safe out there.